Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Hi, Beverly. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, darling. It's so good to see you. And thank you so much for joining me today. We are getting on the road to celebrate International Women's Day. And I thought I would invite you down to tell the little KBS family about your business. So can you start with your by introducing yourself, please? And what do you do? Yeah, so I'm Beverly Sydney. And I'm the founder of Sydney Hudson. Uh, Sydney Hudson is an accountancy firm. Um, we've been around for about 10 years old, 10 years and going now. Um, we essentially deal with all taxes related. Our major focus is on taxes. So we do BMTs, we do self-assessments, we do tax returns. So yeah, we just love taxes. <laughs> so where, is, where would you say your heart lies in, in the accounting world? Like what's your specialist subject? Oh, and which which type of tax I like? What's your favourite? That's a question and a half. I've never thought about that. Oh my goodness, that's a good question. I reckon income tax. I think is the one. Nice. The reason why, like, I don't think I've ever. I've really come to the realization of why I'm fascinated by tax. I don't know if I've ever told you this story. When I basically my first job working at McDonald's. Got my first paycheck and I went, yeah. the rest of my money at? <laughs> right? Daylight robbery on your paycheck. Like, excuse me, you took how much? What hours? It was my first job. I was mega proud of it. I was like, yes, let me open my check. Let me open my pay slip. But literally, the half of it was gone. I was going to roll tax code for one. I was, I, yeah, I was not happy bunny. So okay. I think income tax fascinates me because there's so much you can do with that. Yeah. Um, I like income tax. I must no, that's a good one. And that would help out a lot of people who like ever had any questions about why is my tax so high? Why am I paying this mm. amount? Like if anyone has those questions, Beverly is the girl to Hi. go to. <laughs> that's brilliant. So you started the business 10 years ago. What made you start? Why? Do you know, it, I think as with most people, it wasn't something that I woke up one morning saying, yeah, I'm going to start a business. Um, it was, it, this, well, I was a teacher before I became an accountant. So I literally got to the point, and I was teaching business science and economics, so doing accounting was too far away. But I literally had done that for, to taught for a while, and I think I, I, think I, I taught in South London, so I paid my debt to society, because teaching in like South London schools is pretty, <laughs> anyone that's taught in London class that's work, work. <laughs> dirty, dirty house. <laughs> that's work. <laughs> anyway, I mean, some of them are, you know, in universities, and we've got kids and things of that nature. But um, it got to a point where, I felt I just wasn't, I wasn't fulfilled. And I just wanted more out of life. I wanted to be able to wake up and, and say, do you know what, I'm happy with what I'm doing. I mean, teaching was fulfilling, I won't get, don't get me wrong. I loved seeing the kids progress, but I think I'd got to a point where I'd now had my first child and I wanted to make a progress for him. Um, yeah. So that, I mean, I mean remember my, my husband saying, you know what, Beth, you can do more than this. There's more to you than what you're doing right now. Um, oh. Yeah. And funny enough, I didn't start with accounting. I started with PR. So, um, oh, yeah. And you kind of transitioned. <laughs> yes. And then the tax fund got you and you transitioned into account. Like, yeah, PR's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like as bad as teaching. <laughs> like, I don't know what I was thinking, literally. <laughs> Left. Um, okay, so how would you describe your experience of being a female business owner? What would you say is maybe different towards being a male business owner? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a really good question. I kind of feel like I'm, I've, I've been shielded from knowing what the difference is. And the reason why I'll say that is because I went to a girls' school and okay. most of my life I've done things in a female environment. So yeah. I think I've been shielded. So when I, when I go out to the world... I'm bossing it either way. I don't care if you're a girl or a guy. Because when you go to, I think when you go to a girls' school, you, you kind of grow up with that entitlement. Or Entitlement is the wrong word. I think you grow up with that, well, I'm doing what I'm going to do. You either like it or you don't, but I'm going to be about me. <laughs> That's it. I love it. Exactly. So I feel like in business today, in, in accounting, and when I deal with male clients, when I deal with female clients, I think I still have that support from being in a girls' in the girls' environment, a girls' school environment, or just just believing that to me, even though it does matter in the real world, my world is different to somebody else's world. I make it work for me. So female or no yeah. female or male environment or not, if I'm coming into the room, whether you like it or not, if I need you to listen to me and I need your attention. I'm not get it. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Whether that's because I was literally thinking about it, whether it's because I went, I've been in, I've been in a female empowered um, 
uh, what's the word I'm looking for, empowered environment. Maybe, but that is giving you that strength, I guess. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> it makes no difference to me at the moment personally, but yeah. In terms of schooling, like I get you, like my whole family's female, I went to an all girls school, so I get that sense of being in a female led environment where you do feel empowered. I, I get <laughs> that. But what do you think about the female presence in accounting then in, in our sector? Do you feel like that's changed over the years? Definitely. Now, when I think I, I come out of my little my little bubble a bit more, um, I can see that it's more male dominated. Um, I think there was a group I wanted to join the other day and I thought, well, let me look at what they were doing. It's very male dominated. I was like, where are the female at? Well, where are the girls at? And I'm thinking, where are the black girls at? <laughs> You know, like, where we at? I know we're not sitting down quietly, not, you know. Um, so it is a male-dominated industry. Um, and interestingly enough, I remember when the when uh, a couple of years back with Black Lives Matter, there was a situation where I, I had addressed a male, a white male, about this. And I said, well, you know, what's going on? Um, and for him, he he understood what I meant. And he, he made a point to say, you know, Bev, I do see it. Well, his, interesting. Was, yeah, his response, which I respected, was that, well, how do I do better? How do I get female, a black yeah. female? And to be honest, when I look at his trajectory, we had that candid conversation. When I look at everything he's done so far today, I'm impressed. So I think it's almost, to make a difference, we have to go out and do what needs to be done. 100%. We need to make ourselves known. And also known that we are there's no difference in the quality and the caliber if you're coming to a black woman or a white man or, or anybody else like it's the quality of what you can deliver and I think sometimes that gets overlooked exactly don't get me wrong I will I will get clients at times where they think because I'm a because I'm a female they might speak to me differently and not necessarily um in a kind of in a rude way sometimes it's just oh let me just be careful because I don't want to hurt the feelings I'm a, I don't roll that way <laughs> You know, I'm a big girl. Let's let's just let's do it. <laughs> We're talking numbers. You know, I, in all honesty, it doesn't really matter. You know, whether male or not. You know, we're talking numbers. Let's forget. You know, our gender at the minute. Your numbers mean one thing or the other, irrespective of what gender I am. You know, don't don't soften the blow because you know you want to be nice. Um, I've had a few of those. I've had a few comments which were weird. Which I thought, would you say that to a? Uh, another I'm actually worried about saying this one there now <laughs> you know he, he made a comment which I thought to myself well would you have said that if that was a male accountant mm. you know, regarding how it looks mm-hmm. you know, and I remember yeah. thinking, to off at the point at that point but it's only when I thought when I came up I thought Cha. <laughs> just not today not today my friend you know what I mean? <laughs> but I, I think it's just one of those things that if it was worth addressing, I wouldn't. Um, and I, even now, I think maybe I should have addressed it. But in all honesty, I think we had a conversation after that and I kind of put it beside. But if it comes up again, yeah, I, I'll be dealing with that. <laughs> I love it. That's right. No, you have to. So if we was to look at juggling work life and family life, you've got two beautiful children and you've got a wonderful husband. He's all over yeah. social media, always bragging about you, which I love. Oh. How do you, like, I also know you're a full-on workhorse Bev like you're in the office all hours every single day working your ass off so how do you juggle that yeah I, I'm not gonna say I do but I am gonna say I know I know my limits um there are days where I literally with the boys and my husband I'm like bye I'm going to bed now no one come to the door I don't actually want to hear you breathe so. <laughs> I love you guys, like, you know, cook food, but no one disturbed me right now. Um, I think just uh, as my, my personality type is literally, I like results, so I like to get things done. So trying to find a work-life balance, that means nothing to me. So I work to the core, but I do listen to my body. When my body, when my body and my brain says, you're done, then that's it. Um, I do have a husband who's very supportive, who understands what needs to be done. So I think it's, it's a question of having supportive people around you. Um, and also just knowing your limits, because we're all human beings. And accepting the fact that as much as, you know, it's said that the male species might be stronger, you know, I will accept my, I will expect a step to that. Yes, I am a woman. I am, I, I have feminine needs. And, you know, if I'm tired or I don't want to do something or certain, let's be real, certain times of the month, I'm going to act crazy because I just do, you know, oh. 
That's just what it is. It just roll it. Roll it and let's go. <laughs> Next week it'll be okay. <laughs> So, oh, my darling, what advice would you give to other female budding business owners or budding entrepreneurs out there? What advice would you give them? Yeah, so I would say just start. Just yeah. start, pick up your pen and paper, just get on with it. Often a lot of us are like, we need to get 120 things, to, um, you know, in place before we start. Those things are yeah. not going to happen. Get started, get on with it. Support will come along the way because we've got to understand that that dream of doing that business is subconsciously it's there so you have to trust that how how it needs to be done will come so just get along and just do it just go for it i love it okay thank you so much last question for you who is the most important woman in your life or the most inspirational (gasps) woman in your life that would be my mother Ah, yes what's your name regina My mom is literally one of those. And I think the reason why I love how she just functions is she's a no skin off my nose type of chick. Yeah. Literally, I remember, like, someone would happen at school and, you know, I'd come home and in a hug and she'd look at me like, <laughs> like, come on. You know, she, she looked me wrong. Her, her thing, to be fair, was food. Like, if you, you know, if you're upset. Cultural thing, because I said, like, Parents of colour don't know how to count their kids. Like, yes. <laughs> but I think that, having, I think having a thought of, you know, well, nothing can phase you. Don't worry about what so-and-so has said. Just mm. get up and do what needs to be done. I think that I learned from her. But also just the fact that, well, they run the same type of, well, not the same type of blood, but they run blood through their system. So do you. You know, they walk so do you why are you different yeah why, why are they different why can't you do what they're doing you know that's one of the and she she did it i think indirectly raised me up but that was it taught me never to look down on myself never to don't get me wrong there are days where you know imposter syndrome and everything else kicks in but once i remember regina's my husband likes to say oh god regina's descended <laughs> you know when, now yeah once I remember literally once I remember how she does things and how she looks at life in general I'm just like get up and go do what you want who's gonna think what who's gonna say just get up and do it that's such a strong um role model to have as well and like people people not everyone has that role to have someone who's so strong and to also push you to be equally strong and free and go and do what you go and get it go and get it and I see you do that all the time yeah I don't. I like to close my eyes to the thought of it because I think when I fit, when I fit into that, I have to say when I fit into that personality. Because I think just the other day I posted something on LinkedIn about being an ambivert. I think it's called basically when you're an extrovert and you're an introvert. Okay. But people, in, yeah. So people that know me would probably think that I'm an extrovert because I'm quite open and laugh. I laugh out loud. But what's interesting is after I have all of those moments, when I get home, I'm drained. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm giving all of my energy out you know yeah. so I had my introverted moment um so it's kind of it's, it's weird it's like a split personality almost when I'm out and I know I've got to do what I've got to do then you know you step into the you step into the game right and you yes. just do what you've got to do and I think as women um I'm not sure you'll find the same if you're going into a male dominated inter- industry such as ours you know you go in and you you put that hat on you know so to speak and you just get on with what needs doing and it yeah, to me, black, white, brown, yellow, you know, female or no female, I'm here to do a job. I can do it just as good as A, B, and C. Let's get it done. Do you know I what that. I mean? Um, I yeah. Love and it, yeah. <laughs> I love your energy so much. Can you please tell everyone where to find you? Where are you on socials? What's your website? Let us know. Yeah. So I a uh, uh, website is uh, www.sydneyhudson.co.uk. Um, on Instagram, I want to say how do, I, how do I not know my own handle? Right. Let's start again. Sydney <laughs> <laughs> Hudson Finances, I believe. Um, okay. or LinkedIn, LinkedIn is Beverly Sydney. Um, Beverly and Sydney yeah, on that way. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, I'm going to link to all everywhere they can find you in the description box of this video. Thank you so much for your time today, Mahani. I really appreciate it. It was so lovely speaking to you. And yeah. uh, happy birthday! Yay! Darling, <laughs> 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 have the best day. Thank you so, so much. No, See you.